Antoine Davis, University of Detroit Mercer. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How you doing? I can't complain. I'm doing well, man. Great to have you in the show. We've been talking about you, Maz, for what, the past two, three weeks now? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're, we're, uh, we're your number one campaign managers we here are. Yeah, at I'm, Woodward Sports. We're yeah. all rooting for you, Antoine, and we're happy uh, to have you join us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Long time fan. And I've been fighting on Twitter about this, too. You've been fighting on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Everybody's been pissed? That. Everybody, yeah. Let me ask you a question. So, this is coming from a guy who told you Rashad Phillips is my cousin. Shout out to Rashad. What's going on? I went to Jay Zoo, which is right across the street from Callahan Hall. So I'm deeply invested in UD Mercy, man. Just talk about what it meant to do the things you did over five years at UD Mercy. We'll get into the record and all that, but what did it mean to be as good as you were for five years? That's, that's tough. Um, yeah, just all the work I've uh, I put in over the years has just paid off, and you know, people call my dad crazy and call my <laughs> folks crazy for all the work that I put in over the. What's it like your your pops years. being your coach? Like how? What, like that's my dad was my track coach, and that was too much for me. Like, um, what's it like? It was rough at the beginning. Now he kind of like later on, even this year and last year a little bit, he kind of gave me the keys to the car. Kind of gave me the. Um, the ability to lead and you know he hadn't he didn't have to do as much talking he let me lead guys and just you know uh just basically grow as a leader from the standpoint wait everybody knows that you're there to score points i mean you can't yeah. you can't have a 10 point game and nah. mercy's gonna win what's the craziest defenses that you've seen uh in the horizon league um i've seen everything i've seen boxing one i've seen uh, I think Oakland's probably guarded me the craziest. Like mm-hmm. the start, um, my freshman year when we first played them, they um, they had me. They would rush two people at me, and it would leave people open. But they were so worried more about me, so they run two people at me and had those two people stay on me. And basically, they play like four on three, and that's probably the craziest thing I've ever seen. I've, I don't think anybody's ever been guarded like that in college basketball. Anybody ever that's talked nuts. In some junky like? You ain't getting yours tonight because I'm on you tonight. Anybody say that to you? Uh, yeah, but got it'd be it like in, got it, it yeah, anyway. Got it in me. Yeah, <laughs> bang. And it'd be like four different players would say that too because it'd be four different people guarding me. It's not the same person guarding me. So you just busting everybody ass. <laughs> 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 I love it. Outside of prolific scorer, because you're a prolific scorer, you're a prolific shooter as well. Like you're a guy that for the past five years at UAD, when you're on the court, you're the best player on the court. You're the best offensive scorer on the court. Going into the NBA. That's not going to be the case all the time. There's some guys out here that are some juggernauts, if you will. What other skills do you possess that you know you can fall back on in the NBA? Um, just, you know, not only my ability to uh, shot create, but I feel like it's an underrated skill of mine, but I also make people better around me. That ain't no underrated like, skill. That's a yeah. damn good talent. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like I'm a good passer, so I mean, not just scoring the ball, get other people involved and then you know I feel like I'm really good off the ball as well I always played off the ball in high school so um that was the two yeah I was like the two guard and so you know playing with players like Luca and LeBron and Dame and players like that that are that have the ball basically 90 percent of the time you know just um being able to score off of them and playing off of them, I feel like I could do a good job playing off the ball. Yeah, I think one of the, the underrated things, of course, when you're scoring a lot of points, no one's going to talk about it, is your passing. It's not like you average one assist a game or something like that. Um, so how important, I know you want to score and everything, but how important was it to get your teammates involved in the offense too? Um, it's important because, I mean, with, with defense, is so keyed in on me every game. And, you know, I mean, it gives everybody opportunity to score. And so... I just, you know, I go out there and make the right plays, right reads and everything, you know, just play the game the right way. That's how I was taught. Antoine, take us back a week ago. Uh, it was Thursday, I remember, because yeah. Thursday's my bowling night, and I had you on my phone. I'm watching your game more than paying attention to, he's a heavy to bowler, throwing the ball. That's, right? he's a heavy so, bowler. that's why he bowled a 95 that night. <laughs> <laughs> I did not bowl a 195. That's it, 95. Oh, 95, <laughs> yes. sorry. So take us back. It's Youngstown State. They're a rival. They were one of the better teams in the league. Uh, the fans were on you. The crowd was, was against you. You guys had a lead in that game. Man, was I rooting for you yeah. guys to win that damn game. But they wind up beating you. How would you feel during that whole game? And down the stretch, were you feeling it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was feeling good. I mean, with the defense that they were playing against me, you know, to send in two people, I'm getting doubled every time I cross yeah. half court. So it was, um, it kind of threw my rhythm off a little bit. But I mean, like you said, we had a chance to win. It just came up short. I mean, I felt like we fought hard enough. I mean, 
we missed some layups, yeah. Yeah. little bunnies around the rim and stuff yeah. like that. But other than that, I mean, I felt like we couldn't have played any better. How about Dad? What was Dad telling you throughout the game? Did, did he does he has he been coaching you differently down the stretch here as you were reaching for Pistol Pete's record? Um, no, he's co- he's coached me the same. Um, at the beginning of the year, though, he was a little hard on me, like trying to like you could tell that the record was more bothering him a little bit instead of like <laughs> bothering me, and he yeah. was making me nervous about the record because he was. He was so anxious for me to do it. He felt like I could do it. And, um, you know, we just sat there and talked, and he just said, um, we're not worried about the record. You did so much in college basketball. Yeah. I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Have you, have, I'm sorry, Bray. Let me get one more. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Being the elder statesman in the room here, it's I got to actually watch Pistol Pete. Well, just, actually, Terry's older than me. Anyway, Pistol Pete was, a, play too, he was a, hell, <laughs> he was a hell of a ball player. And how about the similarity with you? His dad coached him. As well, did you watch a lot of a lot of his uh, tape? Uh, when I first started playing basketball, I actually um, watched his dribbling videos. Like you can be he, honest though. You, if you ain't watching, you ain't no. I'm joking. Oh, no, no, I'm no, messing yeah, with no. you. I watched. That was like some, like for beginners and like um, yeah. it was me first starting to play and just you know really starting to work out and stuff. So I used to go out in my driveway and just do his dribbling drills where he'd throw the ball through his legs really hard or he'd figure okay. eight. And just every I, I worked on all that. Me and my dad worked on all that. That's crazy, man. That, that, that's a testament to yeah. now, now as I watch you, now as I watch you, uh, now just watching everything you've done in this five years, now hearing that, that that's how you kind of got started, man. That makes me like you and your game even that much more. What do you think about the people that are ignorant and just like, oh, he shouldn't break the record and he had too many years and he had five and Pistol did it and this. What do you think about the ignorant people that talk like that? I mean, I would just put into into um, this perspective of if they were in my shoes, it wouldn't have mattered if they play five years or four years or not. So, um, well you know, people say what they want to say. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them, most of them, or majority of them are, like, fans of Pistol Pete. And, I mean, I'm a fan of Pistol Pete as well. So um, I can understand their frustrations, why they're mad about it or whatever. But you still can't take it away from me at the end of the day. Because, like I said, um, if they were in my shoes, if they played five years of college basketball um, – they would they wouldn't be saying the same thing. They would be wondering why why are people hating on me? Why are people why do people feel this way about me? So I don't I don't really look at it like that. I just look at it as a blessing. See, I did well I did said. not understand well the said. anger. Why are you so pissed? They didn't even know Pistol P had no, the record. They, right. they, they didn't even know. Then. They yeah. had no idea. I mean, unless you're Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless is a big fan of him. It's true. So, but there's like one. I, I, I give you. He's <laughs> a big one. mouth anyway. We don't listen to him anyway. <laughs> Not at all. Talk about your journey a little bit. Now, you're born in Bloomington, Indiana, which we know is a, a, is a huge basketball town, and you're raised in Houston, and you come to Detroit. Like, what was that journey like? How was Detroit? How was your five years here in Detroit? Because we're all born and raised here, man. How was your five years coming from, How, your journey? Um, when I first got here, it was different. I wasn't used to the the culture, the, the music, the yeah. um, <laughs> the different type of, like, stuff, like, Baby Houston, right? yeah, all the, Houston's <laughs> so different from Detroit, but I mean, I it, Detroit really grew on me, and um, I love Detroit. It's like a, I wouldn't say second home, I'd say a third home because I always considered Houston a second home for me. And that's fair. But um, I mean, even when I leave here, I'm always going to come back here because I love Detroit so much. That, that's dope, man. If you had your choice right now, yeah. and the draft is uh, tomorrow, where do you want to go? Um, be honest. Just, just pick it. Just tell would, me what you want. It don't be. matter. Players keep I moving know. around anyway. <laughs> I know. I just um, want to know. Honestly, I really will want to play for the Pistons. But, I mean, wherever God Sweet. places me is where he wants to play. Hopefully he places me, if it's not here, somewhere hot. So, you know. Um, <laughs> that weather, that yeah, weather is, somewhere, is a deal. How about those hot, Houston right? Rockets? Uh, they're just as bad as the Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, my um, John Lucas is a player <clears throat> development yep. guy for them. And, you know, yeah. he worked me out when I was in Houston from uh, sixth grade through high school. Oh, wow. So um, me and him are really close. I look at him like a second dad because him and my dad were just as, like, they were just as hard as me, um, hard on me as one of the others. So they were both equally hard on me. Hey, we hear some rumors always. Uh, like, who recruited this kid? How'd you get out of Indiana? We have a guy here, Neil Rule. Neil Rule uh, does our afternoon show. He does the and, voice. And he's the voice of the Oakland, Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Grizzlies. Uh-huh. So I asked him, I'm like, how the hell did you guys – you know, not get Antoine. What, 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 he said Oakland was the first team to recruit you. Is he telling the truth? They were They were one of the first teams to recruit me. SFA recruited me, Stephen F. Austin. Yeah. Okay. Um, then there was other little schools, UTEP. Well, that's not a little school, UTEP. Um, 
Nevada and then Oakland came around and, and offered me too. And so it was funny because having them offer me and then, you know, I was thinking I was going to play for my dad at Texas Southern and then ending up coming here is just crazy. And then finding out that they're a rivalry school too is was even crazier to think about. Wow. Two NBA questions for you. One is centered here about in Detroit. When you watch the Detroit Pistons, obviously worst record in NBA, a lot of factors. What do you Tied see? for the worst record. Okay, worst record in the NBA. <laughs> what do you see when you see the NBA? I mean, when you see the Detroit Pistons, what do you see what the issue is or could be? Um, I won't speak on an issue necessarily. Very I feel smart. like they have a really good team. You know, um, just especially hopefully they get win by Yama, You know, I mean, that would help them even more. I mean, they have Length. the talent and everything. I mean, the NBA is just so hard. Every team every team's good. And so, um, I mean, with Kate Cunningham and – Killian Hayes and players like that. I mean, you can win with with players like that. It's just something they have to come around and you know, probably end up needing one more veteran, okay, somebody that can you know lead them or something like that. Just for my eyes, NBA this year finals. Who's it going to be and who's taking it all? Um, well, I'm a Suns fan. I've been a Suns fan since um, since Steve oh, two Nash. weeks ago. No, no, no. <laughs> two, two, two weeks ago. I've been, I've been a Suns fan since Steve Nash, okay. Mari Stoudemire, uh, Jason Richardson. Uh, yeah. All those. I've been a Suns fan since then. 2000, um, was that like three, four, five, six? Steve, Steve yeah. Nash was my favorite player growing up. One of somebody, like, I looked at, you know, oh, wow. and, um, you know, just being the same size as me, same stature, not athletic. You can shoot not, better. Maybe, yeah, just a little bit. But, um, <laughs> you know, just somebody of that stature that can, that's playing out there with people way more athletic than him and just, you know, seeing them win MVP and doing things like that was just something special. And so it just – it motivated me because it just showed me that I could I could do it as well. Now you do know the Steve Nash stole the MVP trophy from Shaq, Kobe. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's everybody's opinion. Steve Nash definitely deserving of MVPs. I think he won back to back MVPs. He was like four. Deserved one of them. Four, 14, 12, and ten. Mm -hmm. yeah, those are some crazy stats. What does it look like for you from now to draft day? Um. Well, we're trying to see um, if we can play another game in the uh, t like a like a CBI or yeah. another tournament outside of this. Not only mm -hmm. just like you know it'd be awesome to break the record doing it, but you know just trying to end the season out on a good note, trying to win a tournament for like for our school and everything. So sitting here with five-time All Horizon League Antoine Davis, D1 most threes. Ever. What is it? What is it like to have made the most threes in D1 history? Like what's that like? Like. It, that's that's amazing to me. That's, that's fine. Steph Curry esque. No, yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> it's not because he's number one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said um, at the beginning, just all the work that yeah. um, that I put in over the years, the three thousand shots, the two thousand shots a day, all that stuff. Um, sleeping hold on, in the hold on, hold on. three thousand, two thousand shots a day. This is what, this is the work you put in. There? Uh, yeah, I mean that's what me and my dad were doing. That's it what I'm varied, talking about. And it varied. It'd be form. It'd be threes. It'd be. Um, off the dribble stuff, just working on stuff that I would do in games and everything, you know, just um, seeing all that pay off. And then, you know, um, sophomore year, just um, sleeping in the locker room just to um, stay around and shoot and everything, just um, just seeing it pay off. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, that I could reach something like this. But, I mean, it does at the same time, too, because I just never thought I would be able to, to have that achievement. So this is great to talk to you because a lot of kids out there, like, they see the finished product. Like, people see the finished product. They see Steph Curry shoot from half court. They yeah. see Dame shoot from half court. They see Jason Tatum. They see yourself, Antoine, what you did. And they see that finished product, but they don't see the work that y'all put in. They don't see the shots. Like, they don't see what Steph was doing with his dad back in the day. They don't see what you and Mike were doing back in the day, getting ready for this moment. So I'm glad that you, you let that be known. The journey might not be over, though, in college basketball. You might still get a chance to break that record, Maz. That's and the right. For him. The CBI, Set him up. The CBI tournament. When are you guys going to make it official and get the invite? Because we know it's got to happen. Um, well, I'm thinking Selection Sunday, like when everybody yep. gets. So this Sunday. Yeah, it should be this Sunday when everybody gets a yeah. chance to get picked. And, well, obviously the NCAA tournament is going to go first and then the of CBI course. and then everything else. So we're going to see. Hopefully we can get in it, God willing. But um, if not, then, hey, I mean, okay, it still, still is a great – career for me and I you know nobody could take that away they'd be foolish to not to not uh, get you guys in there 3,664 points you're three points away from tying uh, Pistol Pete four points away from beating it uh, it'll be an honor to watch you continue to play continue your career 
Uh, take us back to that game again against Youngstown State. Uh, that last shot you took, you had two guys on you at half court. They were like dragging you in. You got to that three point shot as the as the uh, the buzzer was going off. You threw it up. Did you think you were going to make that one? Um, I mean, I was just trying to get us closer yeah. through the deficit, just to um, bring it down some more, so we'd have another opportunity to foul, and you know, um, kind of prolong the game a little bit. Because I mean, like I said, I mean, we we couldn't have played any harder. I felt no. like we got we got cheated out of certain stuff, of yep. course. But I mean, we missed a lot of easy points down the stretch that could have definitely put the game away. So, you know, we can't really look at refs and look at certain calls that sure were made. Can. Sure yeah. you can. We all, yeah, we this, all complain Detroit, about the refs. This is what we do. We oh. all complain about the oh, refs. Man. Speaking of refs, did you see Fred Van Bleek? I did. Last night, did yeah. you get a chance to see Fred Van Bleek? Van Bleek? I watched it. I mean, he went crazy. I mean, you saw, his, po you saw his post count? I mean, a uh, post press? Yeah. I mean, obviously, he had to. Um, it's, fr it's, it's frustrating to, you know, play a game that you love so much and you feel like you're getting cheated out of There's it. There's one you ref. Want, yeah, you, you, you feel like you're getting cheated out of it. You put all this work in. Yeah. People come to, like you said, people come to see the players play and then, you know, bad calls down the stretch, you know, could could mess up a game, not only for the team, just for the player as well. So, you know, um, I kind of understood what he meant by it. I mean, I hope he doesn't get, he's obviously going to no, get no, fined no. for he, it. He's getting fined big time. I mean, no, he, he, he said, he said what he needed, I felt like care. he said what he needed, what needed to be said. He got yeah. a big deal. And I mean, that, that game at Youngstown at the end, I'm the glad. crowd got a little – the crowd was bad. The crowd was wild. They were throwing stuff. I saw one player pick up something, throw it back in. You guys were trying to get off that court. What were those people doing? Um, <laughs> they were throwing – I guess they had – Burgers? Cheeseburgers. Yeah. Uh, some, I don't know. And They were throwing drinks and stuff at us, cheeseburgers and stuff. I mean, it felt like malice in the palace Yeah, a freaking bit. Ohio, man. So um, – I mean, I saw your dad going to the scorer's table. You know, he was really pissed. And, you know, I was really pissed yeah. as well. I, I just want to know. Because uh, you get moments like yeah, that. Like you get what happens in moments like that, especially your coach. Like at the end of the day, those are his, those are his kids. Yeah. To like him, like Antoine, his teammates, those are his kids. You're in a hostile survive, uh, environment. The first thing that pops in Coach Davis' head, got to protect the kids, got to protect my players. Because something crazy is going to pop up, especially in the state of Ohio. I know I keep joking, but Eric, like, so when you're in that moment, it, you go from a basketball coach to a father figure protecting your kids, essentially. And that's why I think he was thinking in that Plus, moment. Plus, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, if, if they're throwing burgers at me. What's next? I'd be like. I hope one of them is the five guys because I'm going to eat it up. <laughs> but then you don't know what's coming next. Exactly. Yeah, you just never we'll know. Then you, you got to watch yourself. You, you don't want to get Big suspended. Mac, nah, I'm not, I, I leave I'm just, that on the floor. You insulted <laughs> Hey, help me out of my bracket. This has been a wild year. It's March just, Madness is coming up. Selection worst, Sunday is coming up on Sunday. Do you have a final for me or a final four? What will you, what, Who do you like to win Houston? it all this year? Um... I would definitely love to see Coach Sampson and them at Houston win. I mean, especially with what he's done for that program Heck over yeah. the last five, six years. He's turned that program completely around. And um, I would love to see them win. I mean, um, I would love to see Kansas State even get a chance to, to make the Elite Eight, Final Four around there. Because um, with what they've had to deal with, you know, you know having a new coach, Coach Tang, yeah. they recruited me in the off season when I put my name in the portal. And um, oh, wow. I've known them for a long time, Coach Tang and um, some of the staff. They used to work with Coach Lucas at um, in Houston and the gym. And so I'm just rooting for them. I'm rooting for uh, Houston to win. I mean, it's 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 up for grabs for anybody, realistically, because um, anybody can win, anybody can get beat. So well, you besides, mentioned, besides U of D, who do you root for? Is it Houston always? Yeah, I, I, yeah, Houston, Kansas State. I watched basically all their games. You mentioned uh, yeah. when you went to the portal, why did you stay? Good question. Um, we'll end on this. I just felt like there was unfinished business here, and not only unfinished business, but um, just it just wouldn't have felt right ending my career somewhere else other than where I started. And I just really wanted to stay loyal to where I started. You know, um, they brought my dad and my brother in. They welcomed us. They welcomed us with open arms, and you know. Um, just I'm, I'm thankful for that opportunity to to still call myself a titan and i feel like i didn't i don't regret the decision i made not to leave i 
I feel like I made the right one at the end of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. Loyalty is still a real thing with some individuals. Five years ago, Antoine Davis was rookie of the year in the Horizon League, and five years later, he leads as the all-time leading scorer in the Horizon League and second all-time leading scorer D1. As of right now, no, he didn't mention he got that of, big as NIL as of, deal as, from Nikki D. As of <laughs> as, as as of right now, he's number two, but we think he's gonna beat the record. Uh, for Tom Asaway, for Terry Foster, JB, my man Fletch over here, I'm Brother Network. Thanks, Ed. This is Antoine Davis, and you Thank got you. a fan in World Sports Network, my guy. We'll see you guys. Take later. that hat home.